let's see the topic of integration the calculus deals with various topics like derivatives integration etc now in in the first year of the syllabus we have learnt about differentiation continued with integration followed as reverse process of differentiation so sometimes integration is understood as reverse process of differentiation so let's recap the derivative what we have learnt in the previous sessions say for example the derivative which we generally denote by d by dx of x square by 2 is half d by dx of x square that is half d by dx of x square which is 2x which on simplification gives x therefore i understand the derivative of the function x square by 2 is nothing but x is how we understand the differentiation of a function as simplified with the respective formula now what do we understand with integration as reverse process of differentiation so differentiation of this function is this so integration of this function would be this that is if i take integration of this function x is nothing but x square by 2 is how we reverse process of understanding therefore it comes to the general conclusion that d by dx of f of x say is the function g of x then that implies integration of the function g of x is f of x is how we understand the relation between derivation and integration integration is the reverse process of derivation that is d by dx of f of x is g of x implies integration of g of x is f of x therefore d by dx of x square by 2 is x implies integration of x is x square by 2 integration is anti differentiation So integration is anti-differentiation. That's how we conclude with the understanding of integration as reverse process of differentiation. So let's define the antiderivative of the function. That is, if f dash x is some f of x, that implies f is called. derivative of capital F and this F is called antiderivative or primitive of F is how we understand the antiderivative of the function for this f is derivative of capital f and capital f is primitive of small f say for example derivative of sin x is cos x that implies anti derivative of cos x is sin x that's how we understand derivative of sin x is cos x and antiderivative of cos x is sin x is how we understand the derivative and the antiderivative connected with the reverse process 
antiderivative is also called primitive of the function. Next is indefinite integral. Now the concept of indefinite integral is from where the actual integration topic starts in the syllabus. So what is indefinite integral? As we know that derivative of say x square is 2x then the derivative is written as d by dx is how we write for this that implies my integration which is generally denoted by elongated s or summation s is the symbol for integration so as i denote the derivative with d by dx my integration is denoted with integral integration that is this of some function f of x dx is how i denote the integration that is if i write integral of this is read as integration f of x dx is how I read this. Therefore, when I write, I write the function which is being integrated with respect to x, where f is called the integrand and x is called variable of integration because this is the variable through which I am going to integ integrate. of integration is how we understand the notation integral f of x dx. Now let us come back to understanding that if I write d by dx of x squared is 2x then my integral of this is said to be x squared plus c. Now every function is denoted with plus c which we are going to see in the later session on why the constant of integration needs to be included. Here c is called constant of integration which we are going to see out there. So therefore indefinite integral is denoted by integral of f of x dx read as integration fx dx where f of x is the function which is being integrated with respect to the variable x and f is the integrand x is the variable of integration is how we understand now as we take the integral of the function f of x dx is taken to be some function with always c which is attached this is how the formula is taken but the biggest question here is why do we need to put plus c for every indefinite integral which is taken into consideration. For indefinite integral indefinite integration I have integral f of x dx is f of x plus c where c is constant of integration c is called the constant of integration the reason for inclusion of c is if you go back to anti differentiation concept i have d by dx of x is 1 or x square by 2 is x say d by dx of x square by 2 we know is x that implies integration of x is x square by 2 because these are anti differentiation so integration of this is this because derivative of this is this similarly if i take d by dx of x square by 2 plus 2 so this also implies that integration on the right side 
is equal to the anti differentiation that is x square by 2 plus 2. Similarly, if I take d by dx of x square by 2 minus 3 and let's see what will be its derivative on the right. So this gives me x minus d by dx of minus 3 which is 0 which is also x which I get here. That implies my integral x dx can also be written as x square by 2 minus 3.